let's take a look at some displacement vector examples. Here I'm showing the Cartesian manipulator. Let's start by taking a look at the displacement vector from frame 0 to frame 1. Now we know that this displacement vector needs to have three elements. The displacement in the x direction, the displacement in the y direction, and the displacement in the z direction. The x, y, z axes we're looking at to get this displacement is the frame that we're coming from. So in other words, we want to know what is the displacement from the center of frame 0 to the center of frame 1 measured in x0, y0, z0 directions. Right now, the displacement between these two frames is entirely in the z0 direction. What will happen when this joint variable moves? In the last video, we saw a case where the direction of the displacement changes as the joint variable changes its value. But that was the case of a revolute joint. When we have a prismatic joint, the direction of the displacement never changes. What will happen as this prismatic joint changes its value? Will the direction of the displacement between frame 0 and frame 1 change? We can see that it will not. There is no rotation here. So the displacement between frame 0 and frame 1 is 0 in the x0 direction, 0 in the y0 direction, and in the z0 direction it is a1 plus d1. d1 is the amount that the joint has extended, and a1 is the distance between these two frames when d1 is 0. Next, let's look at d12. d12 is the distance from the center of frame 1 to the center of frame 2 in the x1, y1, z1 direction. Right now, the displacement between these two frames is 0 in the y direction and 0 in the x direction. And the z direction distance between these two frames is a2 plus d2. Is this going to change as the joint variable moves? Since there's no rotation here, the direction of the displacement is not going to change. And we've already incorporated the joint variable d2. In other words, this displacement vector that we wrote will be correct no matter what the value of d2 is. A2 represents the distance between these two frames when D2 is equal to 0, and D2 represents how much the joint has moved. Next, let's do D23. D23 is the displacement from the center of frame 2 to the center of frame 3. Right now, that displacement is 0 in the x2 direction, 0 in the y2 direction, and a3 plus d3 in the z2 direction. Will this be true no matter what happens to d3? It will. a3 is the distance between these two frames when d3 is 0, and d3 represents how much the joint has extended. So we've found these three displacement vectors, and we're done with this example. Next, let's take a look at the articulated manipulator. D01 is the displacement from the center of frame 0 to the center of frame 1. And remember that we have to make sure this is correct no matter what the value of theta1 is. Right now, it looks like this displacement is entirely in the z direction, and the amount is a1. Now, what will happen as theta1 changes its value? Is that going to change the displacement between the center of frame 0 and the center of frame 1? It turns out that in this case, 
the changing value of theta 1 will not change the displacement between the center of frame 0 and the center of frame 1. As theta 1 changes its value, the second joint is going to pivot right on top of the 0 frame. But the center of frame 1 is not going to move in space as theta 1 changes its value. Frame 1 will simply rotate around its center point. That's why this displacement vector does not have theta 1 anywhere in the displacement vector. That's okay, don't let that throw you off. The displacement vector does not always need to have the joint variable in the displacement vector as long as the displacement vector has been written in such a way that it is true no matter what the value of the joint variable is you have the correct displacement vector let's now do d12 d12 is the displacement from the center of frame 1 to the center of frame 2 Right now, it looks like that displacement is entirely in the x1 direction, and the value is a2. But what will happen as theta2 changes its value? As theta2 changes its value, the center of frame 2 is going to move. This frame is going to move up in this direction and take on a new position. We need to make sure that we write the vector d12 so that this displacement is correct, no matter what the value of theta2 is. In this diagram, this angle here is theta2, and this length here is a2. We could use the idea of the projection to find out the components of the x and y displacement. The sine of theta 2 is the opposite side. The opposite side is the y displacement. So for the y part of this displacement, we'll write a2 times the sine of theta 2. And for the x component, we'll write a2 cosine of theta 2. What about the z displacement between these two frames? As theta 2 changes, the z component of the displacement does not change at all. The centers of these two frames are lined up in the z1 direction, so the z component will be 0. Let's move on to d23. d23 is the displacement from the center of frame 2 to the center of frame 3. Right now, it looks like that displacement is a value of a3 entirely in the x direction. But will that be true as the value of theta3 changes? As the value of theta3 increases, the center of frame 3 is going to move up like this. And this here is a3. Once again, we can get the x and y components of the displacement using sines and cosines. This angle here is the theta 3 angle. The sine of theta 3 will be the opposite side of this triangle. The opposite side of the triangle represents the y displacement. So the y displacement here will be a3 times the sine of theta3. The x component of the displacement will be a3 times the cosine of theta3. These two frames are lined up in the z direction and they will continue to be lined up in the z direction no matter what happens with theta3. So the z part of the displacement is 0. Since we have each of the displacement vectors from the base frame all the way to the end effector frame, we're done with this example. Next, let's do the spherical example. D01 is the displacement from the center of frame 0 to the center of frame 1. 
We already did an example just like this in the articulated example. The displacement between these two frames appears to be completely in the z direction, an amount of a1 right now. As theta1 changes its value, frame 1 is going to rotate around its center point, but the center point is not going to move in space as theta1 changes. So the displacement vector will stay the same no matter what theta1 is. It's 0 in x, 0 in y, and a1 in z. Since the center of frame 1 does not move through space as theta1 changes, we don't have a theta1 showing up in our displacement vector. Next, let's do d12. Now remember that back when we drew this kinematic diagram, we had to change the location of frame 2. We had initially drawn it in the location drawn in red in this diagram, but we had to move the location back to the place shown in the purple 2 frame. When we write the displacement vector, we need to be sure to use the purple 2 frame, the frame location where we moved it when we were drawing the kinematic diagram. Right now, it appears that those two frames are directly on top of each other. In fact, those two frames will continue to be on top of each other no matter what happens to the joint variable theta2. As theta2 increases, frame 2 will rotate around its current location, but it will not move through space at all. Since these two frames are on top of each other right now and will continue to be on top of each other, the displacement from frame 1 to frame 2 is 0 in x, 0 in y, and 0 in z. We have no displacement between the 1 frame and the 2 frame at all. Lastly, let's do d23. This displacement vector is going to be a little more complicated because of our having moved the 2 frame back. Right now, it looks like the displacement between the center of frame 2, that is, the purple frame 2, and frame 3 is entirely in the z2 direction. In fact, that's going to continue to be true no matter what happens to the joint variable d3. So the only thing we need to figure out is how much displacement is there in the z2 direction. We can fill in zeros for x and y displacement since frame 2 and frame 3 are always lined up in x2 and y2 directions. In the z2 direction, we have the distance a2 plus the distance a3 plus the joint variable d3. When d3 has a value of 0, the displacement between the two frames is only due to the link lengths a2 and a3. But as d3 extends, that distance between frames 2 and 3 is going to become larger. That's why we need to include the d3 in the z position. Now that we've found all of the displacement vectors, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3, we're done with this example. Finally, let's do the cylindrical example. We'll start with D, 0, 1. This is the displacement from the center of frame 0 to the center of frame 1. Right now, it looks like this displacement is entirely in the z0 direction, and the amount is a1. What will happen as theta1 changes its value? As theta1 changes its value, frame 1 will rotate around its center point, but the center point of frame 1 is not going to change its location. 
or its position in space. Because of that, we don't have to have theta1 in the displacement vector at all. No matter what happens to the value of theta1, the displacement between these two frames will always continue to be 0 in x, 0 in y, and a1 in z. Now let's do d12, the displacement from the center of frame 1 to the center of frame 2. Right now it looks like that displacement is entirely in the z1 direction and the amount is a2, the link length, plus d2, the amount that that joint variable has moved. And it looks like the displacement in x and y directions are both zero. Will this continue to be true no matter what the value of d2 is? We can see that it will be true. As d2 becomes larger, the center of frame 2 is going to move up in the z1 direction, but it will never change its position in the x and y directions. So we're done with d1, 2. Lastly, let's do d2, 3. The displacement from the center of frame 2 to the center of frame 3 appears to be entirely in the z direction, and it's an amount of a3 plus d3, with zero displacement in x and y. Will this continue to be true no matter what the value of d3 is? It will. Changing d3 just changes the displacement between these two frames in the z direction. It doesn't change anything about the displacement in the x and y directions. So we're done with this example. In the next video, we'll briefly take a look at how we can put displacement vectors into Python. Since we've already learned how to create matrices in Python, adding displacement vectors will be very easy.